Welcome back to the more Sip the Tyler Power Rankings. I'm your host, Coach Evans, and on today we're at Team 15. We're almost in that top 10, so it's about to get hot and heavy. So please, if you have not liked the video, please do so. And if you're not subscribed, consider doing it and hit that bell so you can be notified when the rest of the countdown continues. But before we get to team number 15, let's recap teams 32 through 16. Starting with team number 32, the Los Angeles Rams. Team 31, Detroit Lions. Number 30, the Arizona Cardinals. 29, Washington Commanders. 28, Carolina Panthers. 27, Indianapolis Colts, 26, New England Patriots, 25, Las Vegas Raiders, 24, New York Football Giants, 23, Buccaneers, 22, Houston Texans, 21, Jacksonville Jaguars, number 20, Denver Broncos, 19, Tennessee Titans, 18, Green Bay Packers, 17, Minnesota Vikings, 16, Pittsburgh Steelers, and team number 15, I've been asked three or four times, where is this team going to fall? Like, they should have been on here already, is the Atlanta Falcons. Team 15 on the more Sip the Tyler Power rankings is the Atlanta Falcons. Let's get into why or the nuts and bolts of where the Atlanta Falcons are. And it's going to be crazy. These first two positions, it's polar opposites. But let's get into it. All right, let's start with the quarterback position. And like I said, it's crazy. These very first two quarterback positions, they have uh, Desmond Ritter, Taylor Heineke, Logan Woodside, and Felipe Franks. And they have Felipe Franks ranked, uh, I mean, not ranked, listed in two different positions, but that's not the issue here. I have that quarterback room ranked 32. I have this as the last ranked quarterback room, even behind some of those quarterback rooms, with some rookies in. I don't see a guy in this room that can put them over the top. <laughs> the quarterbacks in this room remind me of a saying from the movie Friday Night Lights and Friday Night Lights, which is one of my favorite movies. That, and there was a scene when they, that Mike Winchell, they told him, Mike Winchell, all you got to do is exist within those two to three seconds where it takes to hand the ball off to Booby Miles. That's what these three quarterbacks got to do. And, you know, I got this quarterback room ranked 32nd, last. And they got to exist as long as it takes to hand the ball off to the number one ranked running back room in the NFL. And yes, I said that we are at our second number one ranked position group on my countdown. The Atlanta Falcons running back room is ranked number one. Now, ESPN has a depth chart up, and the depth, their depth chart is what I've been using. ESPN has B. John Robinson as their starter. I don't think he's going to be the starter, but let's just say he's the third string running back. So you have Tyler Algiers, who went over 100 yards. Cordell Patterson, who we, we all know who's at, who – how athletic and how uh, electric he is. Then you have Bijan as your third running back. I just wanted to sink in. That's why the silence was there. So just let that sink in. Algiers, uh, one thousand three hundred. I'm sorry, one thousand thirty-five yards, yards last year. Cordell Patterson. 700 yards last year. You add B. John Robinson to that, to that mix. That's three dudes. Three dudes that could start on pretty much any team. Oh, you know, except for the teams that got like the studs like Saquon and 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 Derrick Henry and, and those guys. That's that's why they're ranked the number one running back room in the NFL to me. But you got the the worst quarterback room. The best running back room. So, we'll see now. Let's see how the rest of the team averages out. They get them to 15. <laughs> All right, let's go to the wide receivers. They have Drake London, uh, Matt Collins, Scotty Miller, uh, Kadrell Hodge as a backup, Frank Darby, and Penny Hart. I have their running back – I'm sorry, their receiver room ranked 24th. 
They really have Drake Miller. I mean, not Drake Miller. Drake London and Scotty Miller. Scotty Miller coming from uh, Tampa Bay. He's gonna probably going to be their slot guy. And Scotty Miller's okay. Uh, Drake had a, a good rookie campaign. Let's see Drake London's numbers from last year. 72 catches. 72 catches, 866 yards. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. And, um, again, don't know how much he can improve on that because they got the worst quarterback room in the league from my standpoint. But we'll see. We'll see. Their running game should help out, though. Running game should be able to help out, and he should be able to get some intermediate stuff. Some play-action stuff should, should open up for him down the middle. And um, for that matter, and I don't know if I said it or not, but I have their uh, receiver room ranked 24th. All right, jump over to their tight end room. I like the tight end room. We all know about Kyle Pitts, and um, I don't know why they had Kyle Pitts blocking as much, and he's built up like like this for a tight end. That's Kyle Pitts' legs. But, again, <laughs> joking. They got John New, John New Smith behind him. I like that pickup. I really like that pickup. And for the, the combination of, of Kyle Pitts and John New Smith, and, again, they got their four-string quarterback listed as a tight end, too, Felipe Franks. Felipe Franks is a pretty darn good athlete. And I think Felipe Franks could could do some tight end stuff for them. Felipe is like 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, uh, played, court, went to UF as a quarterback, uh, left UF and ended up going to Arkansas as a quarterback. And he's extremely athletic. So I think he can get in there and if need be, can can just leave the quarterback stuff alone if he can't do it and play some tight end. So I like their, their tight end room. I have their tight end room ranked eighth um, as a whole. I like I like Pitts. I like what John New can bring to be a second tight end. Uh, or age back type type guy. So I really like what they got, especially if you don't know, if you don't know, Atlanta Falcons gonna run outside zone to death. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left. They gonna outside zone you to death. And as soon as your linebackers overplay it, one of them three running backs gonna hit the goalpost, hit the head on the goalpost. So just be prepared for it. And you need guys that can 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 play off that outside zone. Trust me, they're gonna run it a lot. If you if you're a film guy, go back and study the Falcons. Most of their runs, I'd say 75%, 70 to 75% of their runs are outside zone. All right. Let's go to their O line. I have their O line ranked seventh. Jake Matthews, Matthew Bergeron, Drew Durham, Chris Lindstrom, who I love, uh, Caleb McGarry. Them guys get after it. There. And what it is is not none of them are they aren't like these top tier like guys individually but as a whole they they they've picked guys that know how to run outside zone and are agile enough to get on the second level they work well together in double teams so they've picked scheme fit guys and they look extremely well together they, they work extremely well together in the run game extremely well so i have their o-line ranked number set Let's slide over to the defensive side of the ball, which is where a massive overhaul has kind of taken place with the Atlanta Falcons. The biggest pickup on the defensive side of the ball is they added Calais Campbell from the Baltimore Ravens. They got David on your model, uh, Grady Jarrett, Lorenz, oh, they're 314, so we're going to talk about their front five. Grady Jarrett, they still have. Uh, Lorenzo Carter is one of their stand-up guys, and Bud Dupree. As their other stand-up guy. So, Bud Dupree played for the Steelers. Then I think he went to the Titans. So, now he's in Atlanta. So, their front five is 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 okay. I have that group ranked 17. They're, they're new. They're, they they got to mesh together and find some, some continuity together, some chemistry. So, I don't know how well that's going to work out. Hopefully, they have a guy that can spell Calais because I know Calais can't play a bunch of downs. If Calais has to play a bunch of snaps, middle of the third quarter, fourth quarter, he's going to be tired. I know from personal experience. <laughs> so they, hopefully they got somebody that can they can run in there and spell him and he won't have to play a bunch of snaps early in the game. Go to their linebacker room. Go to their linebacker room and they have uh, Troy Anderson and Caden Ellis. I like Troy Anderson. I do. I like Troy Anderson. Hopefully he'll step up and, and grow into what I think he can be. 6'4", runs well, is where he's supposed to be. Uh, the guy beside him, Caden Ellis, I don't have a lot of faith in. Um, and Troy didn't jump off the screen. I just like what he could be. I like his potential. 
And for that, I have the linebacker room ranked 24th. Slide to the cornerback rooms. They they uh, traded for Jeff Okuda or got Jeff Okuda. I don't know if they traded for him or not, but Jeff Okuda's on the team. They got A.J. Terrell. So that cornerback room has potential to be good. Uh, I need to see them get it together and do it. Um, have them ranked 18, which is not bad. Not bad. A.J. Terrell, Jeff Okuda, they, they could do some things. But right now I have them 18. Um, and their safety room, they picked up Darren, not Darren Hall, they picked up Jesse Bates from Cincinnati. So that's going to help them out on the back end. So they got they got decent guys at every level so far. The safety room I have ranked 14. I got Jesse Bates and uh, Richie Grant uh, on that back end. So as far as their defense, that's they got a, I don't say a massive overhaul, but they got players in place to help them to help them be competitive in that division. And that division is wide open. That division is wide open. But let's run through the um, position rankings and see how the Atlanta Falcons came up to be 15th. And then I'll give you their total score, that total score at the end. Quarterbacks, 32nd. And you can pause it while I go through this so you can see whether I'm too high, too low, spot on. Um, and, you know, make your comments. Quarterbacks, 32nd. Running backs, first. Again, the second, number one. On the countdown, wide receivers 24th, tight ends 8th, O-line 7th. On the defensive side, the defensive line edge 17th, linebackers 28th, cornerbacks 18th, and safeties 14th. Which brings their total, when you average it all out, to 16.55556 and makes them the number 15th team on the more sip to power rankings. So we got 14 teams left. I uh, appreciate everybody for coming out. If you have not liked the video, please do so. If you have not subscribed, please consider it. And when you do subscribe, hit that bell so you can be notified when the rest of the countdown continues. We got two weeks left. Uh, team number 14 tomorrow. So make sure you tune in. Uh, be back. Be back for team number 14. And uh, moving right along, man. <laughs> this has been fun. This has been fun. But we when we get in that top 10, we're going to start seeing them number ones. And it's, it's going to be very interesting to see the the teams with the with the number ones. Some you gonna know, some you ain't gonna know. Everybody knows the number one quarterback, so that's no secret. But it's some different ones out there, <laughs> based off my judgment. It's all right. So see y'all soon, man. Peace.